Reverend St. Paul Calvary, our friends, our partners, and to those who support this ministry, grace and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our elder brother. Today is Tuesday, the first uh, Tuesday of the month of May, and it is our custom and tradition to come on a hybrid uh, platform, both in person and online, the first Tuesdays and Wednesdays of each month. So here we are live and in living color. Those of you who are in person, let's just clap our hands. We can wave and welcome our participants and our congregants who are meeting us in the cyber sanctuary. Listen, we're broadcasting live tonight from the Calvary campus here in the Northeast San Fernando Valley. And we invite you to be our guests in person or on site online every Sunday morning for our corporate Lord's Day worship at 9.30 a.m. There is no church like the Calvary Baptist Church of Pacoima. Um, we are multiple churches under the banner of the Covenant Connection Church family. We are multiple churches, but we are one family. So um, we're going live tonight from the Calvary platform and from um, Xavier L. Thompson on Facebook tonight. I want to give you an opportunity to uh, tap in, to join in, to log in. Um, as you're coming on tonight, greet us. Say hello. Amen. Those of you who are in person tonight, I want you to meet us in um, I, the book of Isaiah chapter 56. The book of Isaiah chapter 56 tonight. Um, um, on June the 3rd, on June the 3rd, here at the Calvary campus, we will meet in the sanctuary it's a Friday evening at 6 o'clock in the evening for all-night prayer. We will come in at 6 o'clock in the evening and we will go for 12 hours until 6 o'clock the very next morning. Our lead intercessor and ministry leader of our altar uh, workers are, are working hard and tirelessly behind the scene, evangelist Dortha Vesto, amen, and others, pastor is going to um, be an active participant uh, leading us congregationally and corporately. Um, you can come in um, into the building or you can watch us online. It will be a marathon for 12 hours of nonstop prayer. If you are in the greater Los Angeles area in the month of May, starting this Friday night, every Friday night to the very next day in the month of May, we will be meeting at our southern campus for all night prayer. The Lord told me that when we pray in May, when there's movement in May, that there's going to be joy in June. And I receive that by faith. I believe that God is going to do something supernatural among the Covenant Connection Church family. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to teach your word tonight. Now, Father, uh, whatever I have prepared on paper and whatever you have given unto me in quiet time, I pray, Father, that you will give the increase tonight. I pray that you will govern our thoughts and our mind, our hearts, O oh God, that that which is said tonight is in uh, compliance with Scripture, that we preach with fidelity of doctrine, purity of heart, clean hands in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. So we are uh, rapidly approaching a season of prayer, a season of intentional prayer. 
prayer, of being deliberate in prayer. Now, prayer shouldn't be just seasonal. Luke 18 and 1 says that it ought to be a lifestyle for every believer, that men ought always to pray and not faint, that men ought always to pray and not grow weary, that men ought always to pray and not lose heart, that men ought always to pray and not drop out of the race. Hallelujah. What is the antidote to quitting? Prayer. What is the antidote of giving up? Prayer. What is the antidote to frustration? Prayer. What is the antidote to discouragement? Prayer. And whatever other emotion that you may be feeling tonight, the antidote, the answer, the prescription is prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we approach, however, corporately, a deliberate, intentional, targeted time of prayer, I want to teach about it. Say amen. And prayerfully, um, the pastoral teaching of this ministry will inspire and motivate you and position you properly to engage in this discipline called prayer. Pick me up in Isaiah chapter 56. I want to read verse 7 and verse 8. Hallelujah. Let's start with verse 6. How about that? Isaiah 56 verse 6, 7 and 8. And the foreigners who joined themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and hold fast my covenant. Look at verse number seven. Here's the promise. These I will bring to my holy mountain and I will make them joyful in the house of prayer their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples the Lord God who gathers the outcast of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. The word of God for the people of God, the church said, amen. I want you to focus in on verse number seven, Isaiah chapter 56. These I will bring to my holy mountain. I want you to underline holy mountain. Those of you who are watching via Facebook, via our digital platform, those of you who are listening in by way of our teleconference call, I want you in your Bible to underline or circle or highlight the two words in verse 7 holy mountain these says the lord i will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer i want you to underline highlight circle pay close attention to that phrase house of prayer Say it with me, holy mountain and house of prayer. The Lord says, I'm going to bring a certain group of people, those who are repentant in heart. I'm going to bring them to my holy mountain. I'm going to make them joyful in my house of prayer. 
their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house shall be called what church a house of prayer for who for some people for all people that means you got to get rid of your biases you got to get rid of your prejudices we was just talking about this in the office you got to get rid of preconceived ideas god loves everybody my house shall be called a house of prayer not for some people but the B clause of verse 7 says for all peoples now um, I want to lay this out tonight there are only two times in the New Testament Mama Sharon Flanagan that we see Jesus going to church there's only two times, Pastor Booker, in the New Testament that we see Jesus going to church. That we see Jesus, Mama Jacqueline Smith, our recipient of our Legacy Award. Good to see you tonight. Yeah, yeah. Two times we see Jesus in the synagogue. Two times we see Jesus in church. Mary Rush. Two times we see Jesus in in the sanctuary he was busy being the church but there are two times in the new testament that we see him in church the first time uh evangelist vestal that we see jesus going to church he was 12 years old you remember that he was entertaining doctors and lawyers. He was entertaining the upper echelon. And Mary and Joseph was looking for Jesus. Were they not? Uh -huh. They thought he was lost. They did not know where he was. They went to the temple. They found him. And once they lay hold on Jesus, 12 years old, Deaconess Lands, this is what Jesus' response is or was to his mother. I must be about my father's business. We see him in church at 12 years old. We see him in church also, um, um, turn with me quickly to the gospel of Matthew chapter 21. The gospel of Matthew chapter 21. I want you to pick me up in the neighborhood of verse number 12. Matthew chapter 21 verse number 12. We see him in the synagogue once again. We see him in the sanctuary. The Bible says in Matthew 21 and 12, and Jesus entered where church? The temple. He goes to church. Maybe I preach this one day and I call it when Jesus goes to church. And Jesus entered the temple and notice what he does once he goes to church once he gets inside of the sanctuary the bible says that he drove out all who sold and bought in the temple he overturned the tables of who the money changers the seats of those who sold pigeons look at what he says in verse number 13 he said to them it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. He says, it is written, my house shall be called a what church? House of prayer. Type it in the thread, those of you on Facebook tonight, put in a house of prayer. A house of prayer. For those of you in person tonight, Put that in your notes. A house of prayer. Jesus says, it is written that my house shall be called a house of prayer. That's Matthew 21. Where was it written that his house should be called a house of prayer? Our foundational scripture tonight, Isaiah chapter 56. Verse number 7. Now, when Jesus goes to church, we see him 12 years old. 
he's saying to his mother, I must be about my father's business. The second time we see him in church, watch this. He's driving people out of church. Now, <laughs> what's up with that, Jesus? We trying to get people in church and you putting them out of church. He's driving them out of church. He's not driving everybody out of church. Who did he cast out? Who did he put out? The money changers and the seats of those who sold doves, pigeons. Now, I have to park here just for um, pastoral prerogative because many have used this passage of scripture as a treatise, as a, um, a chapter and verse to dismiss selling in the church, that the church does not sell because the Bible says that Jesus put out the money changers, right? So many pastors and many leaders use this pericope of scripture to say that we do not sell in the church, that the church is supported by tithes and offering. Now, I'm not mad at those pastors. I am not mad at those leaders to each be their own. When you are in Rome, you do as but ladies and gentlemen, as your shepherd, as your pastor, that is not the exegesis of this text. That is not the hermeneutic of this text. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus put these people out of the church for selling in the church. Now watch this. They sold in the church. It's one thing to sell in the church and the church reap the benefits from the proceeds. This is not what's happening in the text. They are selling in the church in the name of the church, but they are reaping the benefits personally. They are selling in the church in the name of the church, but they are padding their own pockets. They are selling in the church in the name of the church, but the church treasury is empty while their own personal treasury is full. <laughs> Somebody shout, the devil is a liar. That angered Jesus. How in God's green earth are you going to sell in the church and exchange goods in the church in the name of the church and the church is struggling? The devil is a liar. He says, uh, you are robbers. It is equivalent to what he told them in Malachi chapter 3 when you do not release the seed and return the tithe. When you do not return the tithe, what does he call you? A robber. A robber. Why? Because you are holding back something and benefiting from it personally that you should be releasing unto God. I don't think God, Calvary, Southern, St. Paul, body of Christ, I don't think God will be mad at us if we did anything, uh, if we had a, a lemonade stand in the summer on the parking lot of Calvary and we are distributing cold, ice cold lemonade, a dollar a cup, come on talk to me, and the dollar a cup, the proceeds is going back into the church and we are helping our young people on a scholarship. God ain't mad at that. I don't think God is, we going to miss heaven. Come on. If we had a barbecue sale in the name of a building fund drive because we want to beautify the sanctuary because we want God's house to look better than our house. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a barbecue 
barbecue sale and the proceeds from the barbecue sale uh, guess what we're gonna get some new chairs uh, in God's house uh, and every dime every red cent every silver nickel we did not put in our pocket uh, we did not hold back like Ananias and Sapphire did but we gave it all to God we gave it all don't you know God a bless that are y'all listening to me now he's not saying ladies and gentlemen according to your shepherd now i'm only responsible for the covenant connection church family study to show thyself approve a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of god he is not condemning them for what they did he is condemning them for how they did it I mean, you know, you can do the right thing the wrong way. He is not condemning them for what they did. He is condemning them because their heart wasn't right. I, I, look, if you rob from God, you got a heart problem. If, if you lie when it comes to the money and the money belongs to God, look at somebody and tell them that ain't a hand problem. That's a heart problem. See, people get sticky fingers because they got a, a dirty heart. I got to move on from that. I got to move on from that. I got to move on from that. So look, he drove them out because they turned the synagogue into a swap meet. Come on, talk to me. He drove them out because they turned the uh, uh, sanctuary, they desecrated the sanctuary. They desecrated it. They desecrated it by um, having merchandise, ladies and gentlemen, for personal profit. They turned God's house into an indoor shopping mall. <laughs> I got to move on from this. The house of God, all of the note takers, the house of God is not to be a swap meet. The house of God is not to be an indoor mall. The house of God is not to be a place of merchandise, but the house of God is a holy, sacred honorable place that is consecrated unto God for prayer, for worship, for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What did he say his house shall be called? A house of prayer. I want you to go back to Isaiah chapter 56 why did we go to Matthew chapter 21 because shepherd is trying to establish tonight we see two times where Jesus went to church first time he's 12 he's baffling the doctors he's answering questions they are saying what manner who is this little kid second time we see Jesus in church he's driving out the money changers say amen I want you to go back to Isaiah chapter 56 and look at verse number 7. Jesus is saying, um, no, the prophet is saying, by way of Jehovah, these I will bring to my holy mountain. These I will bring. Now, if you need a description as a student of the word of God. When I read this Bible, Christian education leader uh, Williams, when I read the Bible, automatically, if I'm going to read verse number seven, and he says, these I will bring to my holy mountain, here's my first inquiry. Inquiry. Who are these? Who are the these? So I need a description or a definition. I need clarity who the these he is talking about. Now, in verse 7, if you're going to get the these in verse number 7, you got to read the first six verses that leads into verse number 7. Say amen. The first six verses, G, will give you who are, who were the these. Now, let me give them to you. 
ocean and a drop. The these he were talking about, he was talking about foreigners. He was talking about strangers. He was talking about outcasts. Um, um, he was talking about um, people who didn't fit the description of those whom he made covenant with. Who were them, Goldman? Who were the foreigners? Who were the strangers? Who are the outcasts? One group of people specifically. He is referring to the Gentiles. Say it with me, the Gentiles. Those of you who are watching on Facebook tonight, type it in the thread. The Gentiles. Now, who are the Gentiles? Who are the Gentiles? This is a prophecy. These I will bring to my holy mountain, make them joyful in the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Now this is a prophecy in reference to who church? The Gentiles. The Gentile nations of the earth. Now by definition, a Gentile simply means non Jewish, non-Jewish. When we talk about Jews and Gentiles, the Gentiles are everybody on the earth who are non-Jewish. Raise your right hand and say, he's talking about me. <laughs> I'm non-Jewish, but thanks be unto God. God, the promise applies even to me. Now, the promise was initially made to the Jews. He came unto, I'm getting happy, he came unto his own, but his own received him not. And because his own people rejected him, I got in on it. Now, to as many as receive him, to them he call the sons of God. Because a prophet is without honor among his own people when his own people rejected him, he shook the dust from his feet y'all ain't talking to me and he went to whoever will listen to him and receive him and now guess what whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved because his own people rejected him he allowed non-Jewish people to get in on the covenant that's why we say that we are the seed of Abraham. We are the sons of Abraham. I learned it when I was a kid in school. Father Abraham had many sons. Had many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Put them down, turn around. Though I wasn't born over there, I still have dibs on sonship I gotta slow down I gotta slow down man I get happy when I get in the book listen listen so when I find when I want to find out who are the these the these I read verses one through six and they tell you who the these are in short shepherd is giving it to you he are referring to the Gentile nations of the earth what is he saying? Now, all of this, Calvary, Southern, if you're listening tonight, North Campus, if you're listening tonight, our friends. Now, what is the purpose of this lesson tonight? My house shall be called a house of prayer because every Friday in the month of May in Los Angeles, God has commissioned pastor to bring the people into the sanctuary every Friday, starting this Friday at six o'clock in the evening. And we will pray nonstop until six o'clock 
the next morning. Don't bring a sleeping bag because we ain't coming to sleep. We coming to pray. Don't bring a pillow because we ain't coming to nap. We coming to pray. And if you cannot when we come into the sanctuary every Friday in Los Angeles in the month of May and for Calvary, the first Friday in the month of June, if in fact you cannot stay for the entire 12 hour period come hang out with us for a couple of hours when it's time when you got to go just tip on out but my house jesus says shall be called a house of prayer now we gotta put prayer back in god's house we gotta put prayer back in god's house when was the last time the church had a prayer meeting he says, my house shall be, thank God for the preaching, thank God for the worship, thank God for the praise, thank God for you giving your tithes and your offering. But more than anything, he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Can you imagine going to the chicken store, the chicken restaurant, and there ain't no chicken there? How absurd is that? Huh? Huh? Can you imagine going to the shoe store and they say, we ain't got no shoes? Huh? I thought I'm in the shoe store. Can you imagine going to the church, the house of prayer, and it ain't no praying going on? Come on, talk to me. Jesus' disciples, they saw him do miracles. They saw him turn water into wine. They saw him raise the dead dead they saw him rebuke the elements of nature they saw him cast out devils and demons they saw him restore sensitivity to paralytic limbs they saw him give sight to the blind they saw him teach the masses they saw him preach to the multitude but out of all what they saw Jesus do they said Lord teach us how to pray <laughs> come on church I mean if it was me I want to I want to do some of that supernatural stuff <laughs> I want to be able to speak to my enemies and zip them and they disappear <laughs> I want if it was me God I want I want some of that that super that super duper power you understand ain't nobody thinking about praying but out of all what they saw Jesus do they only asked Jesus to teach them to do one thing and that was praying see listen if you ain't praying church you you you, you ain't at your best if you are not, I don't care how gifted you may be, how talented you may be, how resourceful you may be. Listen, if you are not praying, you are not operating at your zenith, at your apex. Say amen. And the enemy won't, he will allow you to do everything but pray. I mean, the enemy, he will allow you to watch TV. He will allow you to clean up the house. He will allow you to come to the church, sweep, mop. He will allow you to do everything. The enemy, he will allow you to sing. The enemy, he will allow you to dance. The enemy will allow you to shout, to scream. Make up your mind, you're going to pray. See the warfare that you're going to be engaged in. Make up your mind that you going to pray. See the distractions that come your way. Make up your mind you going to pray. All of a sudden, Junior needs you. Mama, can you help me with my homework? All of a sudden, the telephone going to ring. All of a sudden, man, you've been feeling good all day. But when it comes time to pray, I got a headache. Because he... He wants you to do anything, Brother Benny, but my house shall be called 
the house of prayer. And this is what the Lord told me. The Lord, I heard him clearly. I heard him clearly. The Lord said, son, listen, listen, we got to get back to praying. Intentionally, deliberately, strategically, purposefully, personally, and corporately. All right. Um, you guys know I can get on a tangent. Let me get back to the word. Verse number seven. Verse, I'm okay. Verse number seven. These I will bring to my holy mountain. Now, all of the note takers tonight get this, that Psalm or Isaiah 56, when, he's, when he talks about these I will bring to my holy mountain, this is both prophetic and is practical. Okay? This, this speaks eschatological. This speaks when he's telling them, them he's, he's, he's telling them this, he, this speaks of a future event. This speaks of something down the road. It's prophetic, Mama Barth, but it is also practical for the here and now. For the here and now. It's, it's um, when I was a kid, even as an adult, I still eat them and I like them. There's a candy that we had called now and later. Right? That's helping me make the text live tonight. Isaiah 56 is for now and he's speaking of something that's going to happen Help me, church. Come on, all of you in the cyber sanctuary, put it on the screen, now and later. Now and later. So what he is talking about, even if you don't know what he's talking about yet, pastor's going to unpack it, but just know what he's talking about, uh, uh, Deaconess Ike, he's talking about um, something that is going to take place now because it's practical. It's personal, but it's also is going to take place later because it's prophetic. Are y'all helping, Pastor? All right, now, 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 now. This is what he says. This is this is this is this is what he says. He says, "I'm going to bring them." Who are they going to bring? Let's just back up, uh, media. Just put verse six on the screen. Um, verse six on the screen. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord. That's what he called you and I, foreigners. I I love it, leader, because the apostle Peter, in his letter, 1 Peter and 2 Peter, the apostle Peter also refer to you and I who are saved. You and I who are redeemed, you and I, who are a part of the body of Christ, watch this, leader, he refers to us who are saved as being foreigners. Foreigners, foreigners. I was talking to one of my leaders in the office before I came out tonight, and I said, listen, when we do this thing right, the world are supposed to hate us with the same vitriol that they hated Jesus. Why, Leader Barth? Because we are not of the world. We're in the world, but we are not. We are what? Foreigners. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, what's up, foreigner? (laughs) I'm a foreigner. You're not a native here, Mama, Mama Jackie. You are a foreigner. Another synonym, I'm moving on, another synonym, he, foreigner, exiles. Another synonym, foreigner, exile, strangers. We are strangers. This is what he said, and the strangers who join themselves to the Lord. Can I give you another synonym that my big mama used to talk about? They said it this way. This is not my world. This is not my home. I am not a foreigner, not a stranger. Not in exile, but they all mean the same thing. They said this, we are pilgrims. (laughs) Teach, pastor. 
traveling through. Now, the Lord says in verse number six, the pilgrims, the travelers, the foreigners, the exiles, the strangers who join themselves to the Lord, the non-Jewish people, the non-Jewish people, the Gentiles, talking about you and I, who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to minister to him. You and I, that's what we do every day. We have joined ourselves to the Lord to minister to the Lord. That everything we do, we do it as unto the Lord. Apostle Broad says, uh, everything we do leads to worship to the Lord. It's because uh, the purpose of my life is to minister to the Lord. My life should minister to him. My walk should minister to him. My talk should minister to him. How I live it should my praise. Come on talk to me. He inhabits the praises of his people because of the whole essence of my being is this. I'm ministering unto the Lord. So, 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 so the scripture says, he that lendeth to the poor, he that lendeth to the poor, he lendeth to the Lord. So when I'm in the, the, the fast food restaurant or when I'm at the restaurant and I take a doggy bag and I say, listen, I know I'm full, but what I'm going to do, the, what I did not eat on my plate, I'm not even going to take it home. I'm going to pack it up. And if I see anybody on my way home, I'm going to pull the car over I'm going to roll down the window and I'm going to say here you go brother here you go sister now I'm giving it to them but that's my ministry to the Lord <laughs> God I get happy he says he says in verse number six that that you and I who join ourselves to the Lord who gives ourselves to the Lord who confess the Lord who accepts the Lord as Savior we minister to him to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants raise your hand and say I am his servant Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and hold fast my covenant, here it is, these, verse 7, I will bring to my holy mountain. Now, did I tell you that this text is prophetic on one hand and practical on the other hand? When he says that when you do what you do in verse number 6, in verse number 7, in the great by and by, when time that has been shall be no more, were you going to his holy mountain? One of these mornings won't be very long. You're going to look for me and I'll be gone. I'm going up to heaven where I can sing and shout. Nobody there will be able to put me out. I'm going up yonder. What's up yonder? His holy mountain. God. Did I tell you it's prophetic? Because John 10 and 10 says that I came that you might have life here and have life abundantly there. Y'all ain't talking to me. I came that you may be in the presence of God here and when this life is over, you gonna be in the presence of God forever over there. Raise your right hand and say it's prophetic and it's practical. It's for here and it's for there. It's for now and it's for later. These I'm going to bring to my holy mountain. Who are the these? Man, I'm stuck. I'm stuck, y'all. The Gentiles. Can I get more specific? Go to Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 12, and we will read verse number 12 through verse number 16. Hmm? I love preaching, but I enjoy teaching the Word of God. Huh? Hmm? Huh? Listen, preaching is when I expound, but teaching is when I explain. Can I explain the text tonight? 
Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 through 16. Look at what he says in verse number 12. He says, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Those were the covenant people of God. Strangers to the covenants of promise. Why? He didn't make it with us. He made it with them. He said, remember, there was once upon a time that us non-Jewish people who, were Gent- who are Gentiles, we had no hope. And we were without God in this world. Verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been what? Brought near, how church? By the blood of Christ. Verse 14. For he himself, talking about Jesus, is our peace. Who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. My grandfather used to put it like this when he closed the sermon. He had taken him to Calvary and he came through 42 generations and 72 burning worlds. He died, didn't he die? He broke down the wall of partition. Are you listening to me? Once it was just for the Jews. It was just for the Jews. He came, listen, listen, he came for his own people, y'all. Are you listening to me? But because his own people rejected him, now John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. (laughs) but Jesus did not come for the world Jesus came for his own people who were his people the Jewish people but because God so loved the world he is omniscient he knows the ending of a thing before the beginning of the thing he is alpha and he is omega though Jesus came to save his people God the father already knew that his people was going to reject him and because the father so loved the world he gave his only begotten son whosoever now come on (laughs) raise your right hand and say I'm a part of the whosoever cry I'm jacked up but who cares whosoever I got a flaw but who cares whosoever come on I got an Achilles heel I got a struggle but whosoever I don't fit the mode I don't qualify I don't line up to what you think I should be but thanks be unto God I'm under the umbrella of the whosoever crowd (laughs) you ought to tell some junkie that Jesus loves them you ought to tell somebody who's struggling that Jesus loves them you ought to tell somebody who think that they don't measure up who think that they're not good enough who think that they don't fit the description you ought to tell them Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so little ones that him belong they are weak but he is strong yes <laughs> he says whosoever believeth in him shall not go to hell tell somebody I ain't going to hell because I ain't got to go but I shall have everlasting life. Verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Romans 8 and 1, now therefore there is no condemnation. Them that love him. Them who, are, who are, do not walk after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. Now go to Ephesians, I'm getting too happy. Ephesians 2 and verse number 14. For he himself is our what church? 
Come on, say he's my peace. Huh? He himself is my peace. Oh, I hope I make it in. No, I don't. I know I'm making it in. I'm, I'm just praying. I'm just praying I make it in that day. The devil is a lie. Listen, tell somebody, say, I got peace about this thing. I got peace about this thing. Because guess what? None of us going to get in on the basis of our own deeds. Uh, if it's up to what we do, I don't care how much of a saint you think you are. None of us is going to make it. He is our peace. That's why your pastor ain't afraid to die. Are y'all listening to me? He is my peace. For me to live is Christ. For me to die is God. I'm like king. It don't matter to me. I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen the problem. I fear no man. I fear not death. I fear. He is my peace. Mm -hmm. Can y'all handle this bold preacher talking to y'all like this tonight? Listen, for he is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Verse 15, by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two. So making what? Peace. Look at verse 16. And might reconcile us. Who is us? The Gentiles. Both to God. Both to God. Who is both? Gentiles and Jews. That he may save Gentiles and Jews in one body through what? Through what? Everybody say, I'm saved through the cross. Thereby killing the hostility. Go back to Isaiah chapter 56. I hope you're getting this tonight. Um, Jesus came to save the Jews, but the Jews rejected him, so you and I got in on it. Do, do you remember, Mama Sharon, do you remember Peter? Um, Catholicism, the Catholic Church, they, they love him and revere him so much that they regard him as being the first pope. Because they feel like the church was built on Peter's confession. But let me, I, that's my, my lesson. But what I'm trying to say is, Peter, who stood on the day of Pentecost and said, um, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. The Bible says 3,000 souls were added to the church. They, they were the charter members of the New Testament church. Hmm? But Peter, as anointed as he was, as saved as he was, Peter was a racist. Peter was a racist. You see racism in the Bible. How was Peter a racist? He was a flagrant, blatant, stone-cold racist. Preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus raised from the dead. Jesus told the, uh, those girls... Go tell my disciples and Peter. He, Peter's the only one he calls by name. Meet me in Galilee. He's getting ready to use Peter. As racist as he was. Hmm? How, how you say, Pastor, Peter was a racist. How, you talking about racism in the Bible. Don't you know that's a holy Bible? It's holy with racism in it. Huh? Don't get, come on, listen, you, you ain't got a hooked on phalanx, pastor. Let's bring it. Let's talk about it. You got slavery, justified slavery in the Bible. How, how was Peter a racist Christian leader, education leader? Peter did not want the Holy Ghost for the Gentiles. He said the Holy Ghost for the Jew is for us. And he is, they went and said, no, man, we, we. We, we had the same experience that y'all had. Peter said, no, we got to call a business meeting. No, no, no. The Jerusalem Council, we got to come together because the Holy Ghost is exclusively for us. Thought that they were superior. 
That's what racism is. Etymologically, in the most fundamental sense of the term, racist literally means fundamentally, all of us are racist by nature. We are lovers of one's race. In the most fundamental rudiment sense, all of us are racist. We are lovers of our race. That's what a racist is. What is a musician? A musician is one who plays music. A pianist. A pianist is one that plays the piano. A racist is one who embraces and loves their race. In the most fundamental sense of the term, we're all racist. Black Lives Matter, your racist self. NAACP, National Advance, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, your racist self. Because in the most fundamental term, we're all lovers of one's race. But racism, you become a racist when you just don't love your race, but when you think that your race is superior than someone else's. Hmm? Now, that's, that's, that's really racism. Peter was a racist. He didn't want the Holy Ghost for the Jews. I mean, for the Gentiles. He wanted it only for us. Are you listening to me? Now, are you in Isaiah 56? Yes, sir. Huh? I'm just going to walk you through this tonight. I'll pick it up next week. Um, I may have to pick this up Sunday exclusively at Calvary because next week I'm, I'm, I'm already projected in my preparation to be somewhere else. But I got to get this to you. So Calvary, I may pick this up on Sunday. Now, these I will bring to my holy mountain. In the great by and by, the holy mountain is the holy city of Jerusalem. The holy mountain is God's abode. But in the now, the holy mountain is the presence of God. The presence of God. I'm going to make them joyful in where? The house of prayer. The house of prayer. Where is the house of prayer? Huh? The house of prayer is the, is, is, is the sanctuary. Is the synagogue, is the temple, is the church. Come on, Acts chapter 3, Peter and John went up to the temple at the what? Hour of prayer being the ninth hour and they saw a lame crippled man asking for alms. Peter said, look on us, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. They go into church at the hour of prayer because it's the house of prayer. What, 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 what hour is the hour of prayer at your church? What hour is the hour of prayer in your ministry? How is it it's the house of prayer and there's no prayer? And you wonder why we got issues? You, you wonder why all of these spirits that is ungodly and negative be able to run loose and wild and they're not challenged? They're not cast out? Because it's the house of prayer, but ain't nobody praying. Hmm? Now, he says, I'm going to make them joyful in my house of prayer. Those of you online, stay with me for five minutes and we're all be finished. I'm going to bring them to my holy mountain. I'm going to make them what? Where? Where? I'm going to make them joyful. Where, church? No, 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 pastor. No, pastor. COVID didn't change the world. That's all my, my, my people watching me in the cyber sanctuary saying, Woo, I like, I, I get to worship I get to watch it at home. Here's the promise. The promise is he's going to do something in his house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
I'm in trouble now. I know he is everywhere. Listen, he may show up in your house, but he promises to show up in his house. That's why I go to church. That's why I press my way. That's why I forsake not the assembling of myself together. That's why I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into. Y'all still going down to that church? Don't you know Delta? Don't you know Omicron? Y'all still going? That? Why you don't just watch it online? Because he promises to show up in his house. And I won't end on the promise. I don't want to miss nothing. Come on. Shepherd's just reading the Bible. You can't read the Bible. You got to. He said, I'm going to make you joyful in my house of prayer. He says, I I'm going to let Stella get her groove back in my house of prayer. He says, I'm going to heal your body in my house of prayer he says i'm gonna restore your family but you gotta show up in my house he says i'm gonna open up a door for you but you got to give me worship and you got to give me praise and i know that i'm everywhere at the same time but i manifest my presence in my house moses take off your shoes because the ground you stand on is holy ground where is is holy ground holy ground is wherever the presence of God is yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm? He says he says he said he said I'm gonna do something in my house of prayer now pastor ain't trying to guilt nobody pastor ain't trying to shame nobody pastor ain't trying to make nobody feel less than because you're on the line tonight because you're on the conference call tonight but listen those of you if I'm your pastor Jesus says don't call me Lord Lord and do not the things I tell you to do you need to hear me as the as as the voice of God tonight and I speak I feel the unction of the Holy Spirit to say this to you the, everybody who's hiding out online and says listen I just ain't ready to go yet listen you're gonna have to conquer your fear and you're gonna have to take authority over fear you're gonna have to take authority over every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God you're going to have to pull down imaginations and stop allowing the enemy to turn your mind into a playground if you can go to the grocery store you can come to God's house if you can go to the supermarket if you can go to the cleaners if you can take your kids to school if you can pick them up if you can go here there and there, you can come Come to the house of God. Now don't come for pastor's sake, but you ought to come because he made a promise to show up in his house. He says, he says, I'm going to make you joyful. He says, I'm going to make you joyful. I'm going to make you joyful. I'm going to make you joyful in my house. Not in your house. I just like I just like reading the Bible but in my house now, now, now get this because I got to give you I got I only got two minutes listen listen the B clause he says their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar their burnt offering now he's talking about the Levitical priesthood now you know they the, 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 they they offered they offered um, uh, oxen and, and turtle doves and pigeons and, and, and animals and all that. And, and they, they, they had to sacrifice it unto the Lord. He says, but now I, I, want, uh, I want you to go to Psalm 51 and 17 right quick. Because God don't want you to go wring a chicken's neck. You do that and bring it to Calvary. We're going to look at you like you crazy. Huh? Trying to put a, a dead chicken in the offering bucket. That, that ain't happening here, right? Huh? Look, look at Psalm 51, 17. He says, when you come to his house, he's going to accept your, your burnt offering and your sacrifice. 
But, but what kind of sacrifices does he want from you? Sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh, God, you will not despise. When I come to his house and, and I'm pure in heart, even, even, even if I did something I ain't got no business doing, I'm broken. I'm apologetic. To God. David says, against thee and thee only, O Lord, have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. Huh? The Bible says, he, he, he who concealeth his sin will not prosper, but he that confesses his sin will find favor. Broken heart. Adam sinned in the garden, hid from the presence of God, did something that he should not have done. What would the narrative be today if Adam would have just told God, I'm sorry. What would the narrative be today if Adam had a broken spirit and a contrite heart? Instead of saying, this woman you gave me. You know, nobody wants to take responsibility for your actions. Now, with God, I guess... I, I'm just like him. Many times, it is not the action of people that get under shepherd's skin. Because we're all human. We're subject to error, to failure, to mistakes. Come on. And you got to give people room. You got to give them space for grace. I, I tell my family this. I tell people close to me who, who take stuff personal that somebody did to them. Okay, they did it to them, but they're human. Give them space for grace. This is your pastor. I'm closing. This is your pastor. It is not the action of people that gets under my skin. It's the reaction of people. It's the reaction. It's not that you did me dirty, that I'm messed up about. It, I messed up about you did me dirty and you too stubborn to say I'm sorry. Come on, man. Come on, mom. You, it's not what you did. It's not what you said. Own it. I'm sorry. I was having a bad day. God says, I'm going to bring you into my holy mountain and and I'm going to bring you into the house of prayer. I'm going to make you find joy. And then he says, I'm going to accept your offering, your sacrifice on my altar. The altar in Isaiah 56 is symbolic. I'm going to accept your offering at the cross on the basis of what my son did for you I'm going to overlook what you did to me or what you did to somebody else. I'm going to accept your sap. I'm going to accept your confession on the basis of the finished redemptive works of the cross. I'm out of time. I'm out, I'm out of time. He says, he says, I'm going to, I'm going to, they're burnt offerings and they're sacrifices. Does God want burnt offerings today? No. What, what's the sacrifice he wants today? Psalm, Psalm 51 and 17 is what? Broken heart, contrite spirit. Hebrews is what? The sacrifice of praise. Romans 12 and 1 is what? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. Sacrifice. He said, when you do that, I'm going to accept it on the basis of what my son did for you. But my house, man, I've been up for an hour and some change to get to here. But my house shall be called a house of prayer 
All people. Huh? The church got to stop being bougie and stuck up and elitist and think that just because we wear white dresses and hats and shoes that we are acceptable in the sight of God. He says you may have on a white dress and sister girl may not even have on a dress at all but my house is a house of prayer for everybody with your restrictive self. He talking to me. Y'all don't want to have no church. Huh? For all people, Jews and Gentiles, church folk and worldly people. Mm, brother came in the, in the church not too long ago in Los Angeles. Um, young brother uh, came in the church, man, had on a hat had on a hat and one of my men I, I, I saw him looking at him and they was they was ready to go check him and tell him take your hat off in the church I looked at my man and I said I, I wish you would say something to him leave that man alone you can't clean a fish before you catch him leave him alone hmm? Sister, sister, sister came to church and her cleat, her, 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 um, what is this? What the, the blouse? It, it was short. It was short. It was a little bit too much cleavage. But you old ladies, leave that young woman alone. If she hang around here, week by week, it's going to come up a little bit. Then six months later, it's going to come up a little bit more. You ain't got to tell them. Just let them stay in the atmosphere and let them be discipled. My house shall be called a house of prayer for Pookie, for Kilowa. Y'all ain't talking to me. I want the Madonnas. I want the Dennis Rotmans. And give me some Billy Grahams. And let the Jews and the Gentiles come together under one roof. And when all God's children get together, what? I'm out, of, I'm out of time. I ain't out of word. Uh, those of you online, um, listen, don't touch that dial. Don't be a shoplifter tonight. Calvary, North Campus, Southern, wherever you are, I want you to sow into your campus tonight. Amen. If this word have been a blessing to your life, if it have enriched your life in any way, put a seed on it. Every time in biblical times, they went to the temple. They never went to the temple without giving God an offering. Why do we always give? We give because it is right. And if it's right, we give. I'm out of time until next time. I give God the glory because he changed my story. I'm a living testimony. I love you. God bless you. Good night. Hallelujah.